Oh. <laughs> so good. No. Oh, God. Oh, my God. It's so not fair. This video is very kindly sponsored by DistroKid. I'll be talking about them more later in the video. Hello, welcome to this video. My name's Dan, aka Lucent. I'm a music producer and songwriter. And today, it's Code Grey Day. Yay. <laughs> um, I'm reacting to Super Ake, his brand new album. So let's go. Okay. If you didn't check it out earlier today, I put up my reaction to his disaster music video. So check that out if you fancy. My Conan Gray journey up to this point has been a lovely one. <laughs> I adore him, actually. So after hearing his album Kid Crow on the channel, I just completely fell in love with him. I think he's got such a knack for this kind of super witty, super fun pop writing style, but with like this kind of edge of like a bit of sadness, a bit of melancholy, but it all kind of comes together in like a really satisfying pack package. Okay, so that was after Kid Crow, and then we get Overdrive, amazing. Then we get Astronomy, amazing. Then we get People Watching, amazing. And I'm like, oh my God, when's he actually gonna put this album out? And that was like a year ago. So it's been a long time coming, and actually I stopped listening to the singles because I didn't want to kind of spoil myself for the kind of full album experience. So I haven't heard Memories and I haven't heard Yours. So I've heard Disaster now as of this morning, but I haven't heard Jigsaw either. And then there was Telepathy, but I don't think that's on the album. And there was Overdrive, but I don't think that's on the album. I think I've heard like three of them, but like, as always, like the album reactions give me a real chance to actually dig in properly. You might get another cry out of me on astronomy. Before we jump into this video, if you're new, then make sure to subscribe. I do all these kinds of reactions. I love pop music. That is my vibe. That is my one. That is my dream. I've got some pop music classics on the background. Yeah, so if you fancy all of that kind of stuff, all of those kind of reactions, then make sure to subscribe. Also, if you're a big fan of the channel, I've also started a Discord server. The link is in the description, which is going to be like a little hub for us as a community to like share music and everything and if you want to check out my videos early then you can do on the patreon i'm also launching a new tier of patreon where you can request any reaction you want so keep an eye out for that in the coming weeks district our music distribution service so you can get all your music on all the streaming platforms i've been using them for, for a long time now and today i'm going to talk about a few little extra things that are really handy and really useful that i haven't talked about before one of them is the ability to create this thing called an upstream profile um, it's a completely optional and completely free thing where record labels can directly view your upstream profile and that'll feature your songs or your information and they can contact you directly through there. So it's a really good bit of exposure towards labels, but if you also want to increase your exposure by growing a fan base, there are also a whole bunch of extra little options, including creating a little promo card for a different song that you can like share on social media, creating like a mini video to go along that will be really good with social media, and also and also the ability to grow your fan base via text messaging as well with a thing called social phone. You can also update your Spotify canvas on there which is really good and so there's kind of lots of like bits and bobs it's not just music distribution there's more and it's all about helping an artist develop their career so if that seems really good for you then you can actually sign up for district via my vip link the link is in the description and you'll get 7% off your subscription i was using them even before they started sponsoring me i've always had a really good experience and actually my contacts with district are absolutely lovely too so <laughs> okay let's do this oh i'm excited super rick Super rank. Sounds good. Song number one. This is movies. Ooh, quite a kind of big epic. Oh, hello. <laughs> I want to love like the movies. Okay. If you are the diamond, then I am the ring. All oh. so sweet. Oh, gorgeous. He's just got this like idea of this perfect romance in his head, and it's not quite working out. Oh, oh god, I'm gonna relate so hard to this album, Jesus. Oof. Oof, beautiful. His voice sounds great. Oh. Oh, oh I've got chills. <laughs> It's not a perfect romance, is it? Oh. Uh. Oh. Oh. 
fucking love this. This is beautiful. Oh, God. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, I love Coda so much. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. oh my god. This fits really well with like astronomy, the vibes, you know. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh fuck. The thing is I just relate so hard. I just like I'm such a soppy romantic and like oh god. I want to love like the movies too, but it doesn't work out like that, does it? Like you build up this idea of like what romance is going to be like in your head as you kind of grow up and then when you actually kind of jump into the dating pool, which has been quite late for me to be honest, the realization the actual relationships that you go in they're not the same there are complications and like with conan's complication it seems like he's had a relationship with somebody who is still in love with their ex and like conan thought their relationship was what he always wanted but in reality it wasn't like this perfect movie romance because they've had this huge huge fight and presumably it's over because he's like i actually want something more than that i want like a proper romance and it kind of remains to be seen whether that's going to be found or not so heartbreaking so relatable i know exactly what he was talking about as soon as the song started i was totally totally sucked into the journey brilliant songwriting because it's kind of complicated enough to create like a personal story and to make it into interesting but straightforward enough that we understand exactly what he wants us to understand and I was right there along with him and we've cried already and it's only song number one <laughs> welcome to the crying club if you're new <laughs> oh dear okay let's do song number two okay so this is people watching which was one of my top 10 songs of the year last year oh, I love this song it's so good Together, almost oh, I just love this that she's he's like looking at all these different people having these beautiful romances It's this idea again of like him kind of observing the perfect romance. It's all fantasy though He doesn't actually know that about these people And I'm happy for them. No, you're not <laughs> I wanna feel all the love and emotion Someday I'll be falling without caution But for now I'm only people watching so good. This song is so good. Cut people out like tags on my clothing. It's like the kind of Taylor Swift, Olivia Rodrigo style of songwriting, but it's from the boy. And like, I need that in my life, you know? <laughs> And I love that rising swell of the conversation. It's like he sat in this coffee shop, spiraling, you know, oh, I love it so much. I feel the emotion. Someday I'll be falling without caution. Oh, I love that line. I just relate so much to that lyric. I relate so much to most of his songs, to be honest. But like that one in particular, someday I'll be falling without caution. But for now, I'm only people watching. Is like just so, oh my God. I just relate to it so hard. Like I'm working on a song at the moment and um, the first lyric of the, of the chorus is like, I'm falling through the void. And it was like this idea that I was completely falling without caution for somebody, the wrong person. And like, I ended up, you know, hitting the ground. <laughs> it just it feels like he's just in my mind, in my heart, what I'm thinking, what I'm feeling. And people watching is just so, so tightly made, really nicely produced. Music production storytelling that supports the song, supports the emotion um, and supports this feeling of like, kind of feeling like you're missing out on the real love, you know? And it's, oh my God, it's just a feeling that I just like have had for like my whole romantic life. You know, I was a bit late at getting started, you know, coming out a bit late. Most people start dating when they're 15. I didn't start dating until I was 20, but I've never been able to have like a long-term relationship and I've never really been in love with someone. And I just feel like this album is going to be tailor-made for me and I'm going to be crying the whole way through. <laughs> 
Anyway, <laughs> enough therapy for today. Um, no, this is this whole video is going to be therapy, so I hope you're ready. Let's go on to song number three. This is Disaster. If you want to check out my reaction to the music video for Disaster, I put it up this morning. But let's uh, listen to it again now. I love the pace of this one. I hope they play a set Pride next week. It's London Pride next week. I love the vibe. So it's like he's now redating, right? So dumped the first person, not good for me. I guess it's the same person from Wish You Were Sober. So he's dumped that person, still in love with their ex. You can piss off, I deserve more. Um, <laughs> It's like a real anxious spiral, this song, like completely. I just love how tight it is. Ugh. This could be a disaster. I'm just obsessed with Conan. I think he's fing amazing. <laughs> this could be a disaster. I, I'm vibing so much. <laughs> That's such a like hard way to end the song actually. I didn't know whether the music video was like a cut off version and that the actual song would be, you know, a bit longer, but it's actually um, seems to be that's the whole song. Yeah, let's just double check the lyrics just in case I've got like got the wrong end of the stick for this. But like, and I was too busy dancing and chatting over it to listen to the lyrics. <laughs> Let me just set the scene. I left the party at Blake's and it's Halloween. I had the keys to my car in hand, but I didn't leave. I left you a text. You won't read all night long. So, okay, so he's asking somebody out. This could be a disaster. There's so many factors like what if you freak out? It's that feeling when you text somebody thinking, you know, uh, huh, please. Uh, and then you're just like waiting for the response like uh, like I did that recently where I was like texting a guy and I asked him out on a drink and he was like oh I'm not sure if I can do this weekend because uh, I'll be spending it with the other half and I was like <laughs> <laughs> it's that fear isn't it and you just go into this like anxiety spiral waiting for that response it was fine like obviously I like, dealt with it fine but like just like waiting for a response is like it's you go into this place where you're like this be a complete disaster like what if this what if this what if this what if this it's just a real spiral and that is kind of what the song is representing oh yeah this could be pedaling backwards by saying that i'm drunk really should have called i'm a little bit plastered let me just lose my mind is it purely platonic to call me like every night <laughs> and it's like am i reading the signals wrong you know who's ashley yeah so he thinks something's happening he thinks there's vibes but he's worried that he's misread the situation completely and that it's all going to explode in his face and then right at the end there's a real moment of self-doubt where he's like i'm just gonna fuck this up with my anxiety you know it's kind of self-aware ultimately just so relatable jesus like <laughs> let's go to the next one this is song number four this is best friend remember when you broke up with your ex god i swear that bitch was such a narcissist that's <laughs> Oh. <laughs> That's nice. So it seems like he's got somebody backing him up. <laughs> Don't you dare say 32. <laughs> I take that personally. <laughs> Nice. The ride or die friend who is there for you, even through like all the kind of heartbreak stuff. This is my person, you know, they're there for me. <laughs> I'm gonna assume that's like probably a real uh, voice memo to his bestie. <laughs> that's nice. And I think that's like, it's nice to like, that he's kind of taken a moment to kind of be like, okay, all this shit is going on around me, but like, I'm gonna take a moment to appreciate the person who is there for me, even when the romantic interests are not there for me. Yeah, really cute, I liked it. My therapist is gonna hear about this album, it's at the top comment, oh genius. <laughs> oh, okay, I thought it was about the original person, but like, he's talking to the friend and kind of saying, you know, relating on a situation that the friend went through. Made a promise that I'm gonna marry if we're both single by like 32, that's like, <laughs> some of us are only a few years off that, okay? Okay, right, let's go to the next one. I'm not sure I'm ready. <sighs> Even though I've heard it a bunch of times, I still cry sometimes. Um, this is Astronomy, song number five. This song is just so beautiful. <laughs> we drive through the woods 
rich neighborhoods to watch as we looked the th He's not quite over them yet, is he? Young love don't last for life Now I know Now I know It's time to go It's like just this relationship that's just drifted apart It's so sad As much as it seems Like you want my heart It's astronomy We're two worlds apart I love how it kind of has this like really down to earth feeling of the the guitar, but it also has the kind of space, you know, it, it feels like it exists, you know, inside but also in outer space as well, you know, the perfect example of taking something very personal and blowing it up to huge proportions, which Conan just does so beautifully, because that's what it feels like, you know. Chills again. <laughs> astronomy. Oh, I can't go with this song. It's so good. <laughs> you can't force the stars to align. <laughs> oh, I just love this song. <laughs> like you are mine, it's astronomy. We're two worlds apart. I can't go with that song, I can't go with it. Oh, God, I can't go with that song. It's so heartbreaking. It's so beautiful. It's just so perfect, that song. It's, oh my God. It's kind of like a slightly different angle in terms of like the mythology of it you know the way that it's written but like it just feels like this song is the perfect example of taking something that in you know in the greatest scheme of things it's not massive you know like it's heartbreak everybody goes through it you know but to take that and just blow it up to these astronomical proportions astrological proportions <laughs> that's how it feels you know when you're in a relationship or a situation ship lol and it starts to fall apart slowly and you start to drift apart it's something beyond your control that's so heartbreaking and you're just like the realization is so so big and it feels so big and it feels so huge and it feels so dramatic to you because it is everything in that moment and so this kind of comparing it to like star-crossed lovers kind of you know in the in the friggin planet tree to take it to that level is that's how it feels you know oh, i love it so much <laughs> Is this album of the year? Maybe. <laughs> Let's go on to song number six. This is yours. So I know that this was a promotional single, but I haven't heard it. So I'm going to get my reaction. I'll probably cry again. <laughs> oh God, this is sad. Okay, not sure I'm ready. Somebody you touch but never hold. Oh my God. I know I'm not the one. I'm reciprocated. Still I'm not enough. Oh. Oh my god. <laughs> god, you could hear the like breaking in his voice. <gasps> no! No! Oh god! How dare you! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay. I can't cope with this. <laughs> Oh, Christ above. This bit, oh. It's just not, it's not fair. Oh. Oh my God. Just to not be yours. Oh. Is that it? Oh my God, is that it? Oh my God. Oh my god, I need to sort my hair out. <laughs> ah, ah, but it's not okay. <laughs> oh my god, like, just this whole night thing, you know. 
He's like, oh, he's like so in love with this person. <laughs> For him to be like, just have this realisation that, you know, I'm not yours. Um, and I'll never be yours. And this was a one way thing the whole time. And that, at the end of that first, of the first chorus, to be like, I can't change your mind. You're still mine. That he's still in love with this person. It's just like, you know, it's that switch, isn't it? You know, it's unexpected. It's really good. And it's so fucking heartbreaking. <laughs> I can't cope. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, my nose is running. I'm going to need some tissues. <laughs> I should have predicted that I'd need tissues, to be fair. Oh, Christ above. Okay, let's go on to the next song. This is Jigsaw. I haven't listened to this one because this was the point at which I was like, okay, Conan, you're putting out too many sing uh, singles. You've been putting teasers on TikTok and everything as well. I was like, come on. I don't want to hear the whole album before it's out. Yes, I haven't heard this one either. So this is Jigsaw. Okay, shit. It's like, I would change everything to be with you. It's like a, such a dark place to be in with this unrequited love, you know? Ooh. Uh, okay. Cut myself into puzzle pieces just to put myself back together to be something that you're gonna like. Amazing. The second verse is sick. I made you like me, but I even like myself. Huh. Oh. It's an interesting structure for a song, I like it. Another such brilliantly written song. He's just got such a knack for these little like moments that like spin out into a really relatable story. Like you can tell that he's like a Taylor Swift fan and he's taken some really, really good like tips from her and taken it into his own place, you know? Brilliant, yeah. He's clearly listened to Taylor Swift a lot and really kind of understood where she's coming from as a songwriter and is taking it into his own songwriting and taking it to its own place. Like, like I wouldn't say his songs are like Taylor Swift's, but you can definitely hear that he's inspired by her songwriting process and I'm inspired by both of theirs. <laughs> really, really, really clever song. I really like that song. I, the, the central metaphor is really intelligent and well-written. And I love that the second verse kind of has like a real different pace to it. It's a bit Olivia, isn't it? Uh, jigsaw, jigsaw, what is it? Uh, jealousy, jealousy. Yeah, like that kind of vibe. <laughs> um, maybe that's an intentional callback. They are besties. I just love that it kind of has a different form to it, but builds up to a really satisfying conclusion still, you know? Yeah, really cool. Let's go on to the next one. Song number eight, this is Family Line. My father never talked a lot mm. Till all his anger took a hold of him Then he'd hit My mother never cried a lot She took the punches pot Till she said I'm leaving Then I'll take the kids I say Oh, Conan. Just, but I truly am my parents' child That's hard. Wow. Oh my god. Now I'm scared. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> This album is just like confession after confession and it's so deep and real, like... Oh my god. We're not the same. Oh my god. <laughs> wow. Oh my god. Oh, Jesus.
Jesus Christ. That was ex so... Oh, my God. That, yeah, Jesus. It speaks for itself, really, doesn't it? Like, <sighs> poor kid. That's a lot to go through, hey? And then somehow he's then got to, like, reconcile with the fact that, like, this abusive person that he had in his life is in his DNA. And, like, he has to kind of, like, look in the mirror every day and see his father's eyes in his eyes. Do you know what I mean? But it's, like, there's a really, really heavy thing to contend with. And, like, he lays it out very, very bare in this song. It's very raw. I love how the song, like, progresses because it's telling the story of, like, his mum and his family running away from his abusive father and then kind of having to contend with the, uh, the lasting effects of that on him. In a real kind of therapy way, he has this realisation that, like, he has this abandonment complex because of what happened with his father and how that's now feeding into his relationships now for him to like it's like some really 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 personal realizations that just to kind of hear what he's going through is just so heartbreaking i'm so glad that he kind of does have these realizations and in the middle eight he says i'm not my father we're not the same person i think it was a really important message for him to tell himself and for him to end this song with flesh out this kind of journey that he's had with his identity that's incredible I mean, I'm sure you saw it all over my face. <laughs> wow. Okay, let's go on to the next song. I hope this is a little bit more up. <laughs> this is a summer child. Mm, nice. You're scared of the dark when you sleep. Cover up your arms even in hundred degrees. Oh, okay. Your father was awfully you of the summer you turn three Who's he singing about? Is this his best friend again? Or maybe singing to himself? Oh, nice. You don't really love the sun and drives you off. <laughs> yeah, well, you're putting on a brave face for everybody else. But you don't have to do that with me. Oh, that's what he's saying. This is a bit of a Beatles vibe, doesn't it? I'll watch you eat, oh, summer child. <sighs> Beautiful. You're lying, summer child. So singing to like, I'm guessing it's his best friend kind of just saying like, you've obviously gone through a lot and and you try and like look after everybody else. You try and cover it up to, to make everybody else happy and to keep everyone else happy. But I know that there's a darkness in you and actually I think he's kind of allowing this person to be vulnerable with him and saying, you know, it's like it's okay to show that darkness with me like you can be that person with me and i think he's kind of relating his own situation especially following family line like he's looking at somebody else who's gone through a kind of similar situation has similar darkness i think he's uh being vulnerable with them and kind of say letting them know that you know it's okay to be vulnerable with him you know he, they can let it all hang out with him you know okay so this song is song number 10 this is footnote it's inspired by evermore I'm just a footnote in the pages of your life. <laughs> I told you I liked you, you said so It sounds like the person from the beginning, doesn't it? If I waited, could that maybe help? Oh my god. You taught me a lesson that love isn't precious. There's no pride and prejudice at all. <laughs> That's cover. So I'll just take Oh my god. <laughs> How many times have I cried? <laughs> this is like number five or something. <laughs> oh god. He's so head over heels for this person. Maybe he's learning to move on, I think. Side characters end up alone. Oh, you're not a side character, Conan. I love the thematic premise, you know. 
looking at the novels and the romance and kind of relating his love for this person to just being a footnote in his life, in the novel of his, of his life, you know, it's very, that's clever. Beautiful. I love his vocal harmonies that he does. Jesus Christ, what a classic. Oh my God. I mean, that has to be, I mean, I know he listens to Taylor Swift and that now I'm just a footnote in the story of your life. That has got to have inspired this song. Like I can just imagine him listening to that lyric and then being like, oh shit, I need to write a whole song based around this kind of concept of being a footnote in somebody's story, you know? Oh my God, like Jesus Christ. That's just so heartbreaking, isn't it? <laughs> but it does feel like he's coming on, like, you know, he's developing, he's, He's like, getting somewhere with it, you know. He's realising that, like, love is going to be more complicated than, than, than he thought. And, like, although he's still heartbroken over it, he's willing to settle and just be like, you know what, you were a big thing in my life, but if I was only a footnote, well, I guess that'll have to do. I'm just going to have to move on, I hope. <laughs> Stop pining, come on. Stop laying in that heart of roses. <laughs> the whole album just feels like... That front cover of him lying in the roses, wistful, feeling sorry for himself, feeling like heartbroken. It's just, just so, so, like this whole album just fits that whole vibe, doesn't it? That is that is what the album is, you know? <sighs> Wonderful. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Taking a little moment. I've eaten a biscuit. We're having a lovely time. Um, I haven't heard memories um, and I feel like, given, like, Conan, what Conan said on Instagram, it's, uh, probably sad. So, yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> it's been a couple months, time, okay. for me to stop crying when I look at all the pictures. Oh. Now I open up that door, see your brown eyes at the entrance, oh, you just want to talk and I can't turn away, but please don't... Oh. I've just moved on, please don't take me back to where I was before. Oh, oh, oh my god, I got chills. <laughs> I wish that you would stay in my memories. No, I can say goodbye. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. Nope. It's got to be, got to draw a line. Oh, this is epic. He's finally moving on and they're threatening to ruin it all. It's the reality of moving on though, because you, because like, you might have to see that person again, you know. Oh, beautiful. I guess I'll let you stay as it Yeah. Get your shit and get out. <laughs> oh, I thought he was gonna succumb, but he was like, no, you can stay as long as it takes for you to get your shit and get out of here. <laughs> Oh, perfect. <laughs> what a, a... God, it's so good to have that near the end of the album. This idea that he's moving on, he's written all these love songs to try and get rid of this person, to move on, to commit it to memory and be like, this is in the past, and yet they turn up one day and they threaten to ruin it all. But he says, no, you are going to stay in my memories. Obviously tempted. I obviously am still getting over you, but please, just... Stay long enough so that you can take your stuff and then you go because I need you to get out of my life. I need you to stay in my memories. And it's like a kind of moment of strength from Conan when he's not feeling very strong, is he? 
and like but he shows that strength and he commits to himself he's like no i need to get better i need to get past the the trauma of this breakup and i need to move on from you so that everything is in the past yeah and it's a really triumphant thing to kind of like be the penultimate song on the album this kind of triumphant declaration that is in the past i am moving on even if you don't feel that way right in that moment just to say it out loud you know manifested it <laughs> yeah it's a brilliant way to to start ending the album you know that's really 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 good but before we go to the final song um if you haven't already then make sure to subscribe if you've watched this long you must be enjoying so make sure to click subscribe and if you haven't checked out my kid crow reaction that's online as well i cried in that one, that one as well <laughs> so yeah if you want some therapy, if you want some therapeutic catharsis with somebody who gets it, kick crow reaction too. And yeah, and if and if you want to support me on Patreon, if you want to support me on Patreon and get to watch videos early, then the link's in the description for that as well. This is quite kind of serendipitous. My own coming out story that relates to Glee and to Born This Way was up now for the Weeping Wendy's on Patreon. It was like me tr like to celebrate Pride Month but then Kate Bush happened and it all got a bit delayed <laughs> so if you want to check that out now you can do it on Patreon but it will be up on YouTube next week just after the end of Pride Month though. Um, <laughs> like I hope you enjoy that video because it's quite a personal one right okay let's go on to the last song I've loved this so much <laughs> let's go to the last one this is The Exit which is a good title for the end of an album isn't it oh nice I like the texture in that guitar I'm sipping on a half cold coffee. A coffee, Staring of course. <laughs> on your arm, a carbon copy. Mine's so black and bruised. They've moved on. You love, on your lips. Although it hurts, like, I think him seeing this person with a new girlfriend is like helping him put a pin in it, you know. The exit. Oh. Oh, yes. <laughs> Perfection. <laughs> oh, oh, I just love that. <laughs> so, it's so clever. Oh, God. I love how anthemic this like last song is, you know. Oh god, that piano is so perfectly placed. Yeah, it's over. Wish you were so, wish you were sober. Oh. Oh god, what a perfect ending. That like, that like proper huge build up just to like completely f**k with you just to, just to kind of like cut it off and be like, the exit is just such perfect songwriting from, from Conan. It is so him, you know, to do something that really plays with the listener, really has like wit and clever, like cleverness to it and is ultimately heartbreaking. It just sums it up perfectly and like, and, and it sums up the album perfectly, you know, from start to finish, we've had this, like, epic love story. He started off with, like, what I want from love, what I expect from love, and maybe it's unrealistic, but you're not giving me it, and, 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 and this, you know, it's not working. And then he kind of goes through the throes of this super ache, this massive heartbreak, and he explores all these different avenues of his own trauma, and eventually comes to a place where... He's starting to move on and then it kind of has this like little journey at the end of him getting over this person you know the person turning up at his door and shocking him um and also him seeing this person out with a new girlfriend like and how those moments are ultimately although are super painful are actually healing so it has this like full storyline of like of heartbreak to healing and it's like uh, for me like, I relate so much to female, female music, right? All, like, most of the music I do on this channel, most of my favourite music, you know, on the back we've got Adele, Florence the Machine, Sigrid, Aurora, Lady Gaga, Taylor Swift, are my absolute idols. And I've never really had a male pop star 
who I've seen in the same way, because I don't think that men do the same thing that women do until Conan Gray. And I think that this is like, this. it just feels so extra special to find singer, a pop star, who, although he's quite a lot younger than me, he like really does explain so much of what my love life has been like and does it in a way that is very swifty and that is very rel- relatable that is very quirky and fun but also completely devastating and like it is so so wonderful to have a male pop star who's doing that and it is really really special for me and i adore this album and it it really has made me feel very seen it's fabulous it's just so good and it just it feels so well made because like from everything to the imagery of the of the heart and the roses a version of love that's from the movies a version of love that's like uber romantic and isn't necessarily realistic it kind of represents that right and so all the imagery and stuff all all kind of aligns with this like big this huge heartbreak that comes from falling in love with a fantasy and that fantasy being shattered the ep i'm working on is so so in the same vein it's called how to break your own heart and it's like very much like a similar vibe so we're I feel like we're on the same page when it comes to songwriting and it's just I love 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 hearing it it's he's so wonderful maybe this is my album of the year maybe this is my album of the century um oh my god just so good so many beautiful songs that I'm going to add to my playlist. <laughs> Before we sign off, a special thank you to my Weeping Wendy patrons. Um, those are the guys who pledge in the second tier of my Patreon. The Weeping Wendy's get to watch all their videos uncut and they get to watch them a week in advance. Unless, of course, it's a brand new album day. Um, but then they still get they get to watch it earlier in the day, usually about 1 or 2 p.m. And their names are appearing on screen. If you do want to support me, get your videos early. And next month, request song reactions from me. Consider uh, supporting me on Patreon. The link is on the screen and in the description and all of that. Cool, cool. Thank you for tuning in. I will see you next week for that video. Cool, bye.